the biggest risk you've ever taken? I'm in the high volume manufactured beverage business. Senior VP of operations at Roar Organics. What's your biggest challenge with distributing those products as widely as you can? Uh, right now it's transportation. Transportation, the supply chain is messed up. Supply chain is totally out of whack. That's been like that since COVID. It is, yeah. And what's the solution for that? Where does the supply chain get back to normal? That's a really good question. I think uh, it's gonna just take time and more than anything else, it's just gotta be allowed to work itself out. Bottlenecks at the porch, you got bottlenecks with trucks, with labor. With being a senior VP, have you thought about starting your own beverage business? <laughs> no, this is, uh, this is a smaller brand, but we have uh, really big brand ambitions. You're on the ground floor of a startup. Uh, for the most part, yeah. What's the long-term vision for this beverage brand? It can definitely serve as a, a, a regular a regular item in everybody's refrigerator across the country. Anybody that's trying to do this typically gets bought by Pepsi or Coke as soon as you get traction and get market share, right? Do you guys, is that the plan? Uh, you know, I wouldn't necessarily say that's the plan. I, I think the focus has to be building a high quality company and a high quality brand, right? And if you can do that, and along the way, somebody really thinks they can add value uh, to your trademark by, by acquiring you somehow, then hey, that's great, right? But it shouldn't be the focus at all. Right. The devil's always in the details. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. What's your name? Uh, Eric. Eric, all right. Nice to meet you. I'm Drew. All right, Drew. Good to meet you. And what's the company called again? Huh? What's the company called again? Roll Organic. I mean, I even people who buy are selling something. So what did you buy? I worked in the nuclear industry. Wow. And what part of the nuclear industry did you work in? Okay, so when you were negotiating terms, you were basically selling your terms, right? You wanted them to agree to your terms. Well, I, yeah, well, they had to. They had to. <laughs> there was no option. So you don't take no for an answer, and you really didn't have a choice in that regard. So how do you get people to be on the same page with you on your terms when they're not in the beginning? You have to realize that they want something. <laughs> one way I would do that, I had a large contract at one time who wanted to be involved in the government business. They were the best groundwater people in the world, but they'd never done government business. So I told them they need to give me some good rates and they also need to not mark it up and I will help them establish government rates that can be approved by the Defense Contract Agency. And from there, they can take off and do lots of government contracting. And the head of the company agreed to that. So I got what I wanted, he got what he wanted, and now they are huge. You gave him an gave incentive. Him incentive. It's such a common theme no matter what area in business you are, whether it's government contracts or, you know, landscaping. It could be anything. Incentives and relationships and people is what it all comes down to. Well, relationships is important too. Absolutely. I never burned any bridges, and I was always up front with everybody. And once they, you, they know who they're dealing with, Things go a lot better. I run sea salt. Really? He runs Barbatella. We actually met the founder of Rivy Gin, and he he. Oh, Rivy Gin! He comes here all the time. Yeah, they've got it in a few places. Sea oh, they've got it in sea salt here. Sea salt? We're gonna try it. Hell yeah! Raspberry and honey gin. You would love it. You carry every single one. Yeah, come on in. When he pitched his gin to you, what made you put it on the show? I've known him for years. He's a great guy, and the gin is incredible. I've yet to try it, and he told me to go to Sea Salt to try it, actually. Come on. So in. we're going to be there soon. Perfect. I'll buy you guys a drink. Sea Salt, right here on 3rd Avenue. Rivy Gin is in there. We met the founder behind the building like a week ago. We're, should we go to drink right now? <laughs> You're the founder and CEO of Rivy Gin. Flavored gin. So how many bottles have you sold so far? Uh, about 15,000. And 15,000 bottles you've sold since when? Uh, we've been doing it for four months, five months. Wow, that's impressive. I'm going, boss. What is your business? I do two things. I'm an author and I have a wealth management firm. Wow. So how do you make your wealth management firm attractive to the high net worth individuals? Because there's a lot of people like you trying to control their money. Pretty simple. Okay. You know what it is? What is it? You've got to look your potential client in the eyes and truly want to do what's best for them. Actually love them. Really simple. It's not about the money. The money will come. You've got to love on everyone you serve. And it's got to be genuine. It don't, it's exactly right. Genuine. Yeah. What else have you learned about people that must know? Every person's different, right? We're all unique in our own little ways. Um, what you have to do is find exactly it ultimately comes down to serving the client's needs based on what they uh, what they need, what they want. Every person's going to be different. It's like designing a home, right? 
not everyone's going to want to live in the same house. You've got to custom design, custom build, custom manage each and every person's home based on the specs that they want. There's no blanket solution for Zero. Anyone. Zero. So how do you find out their solution as fast as possible? Oh, you've got to communicate. It goes back to love. It goes back to caring. It goes back to asking the right questions. Communication. Right? Communication. I'm heading down to Badass. If you guys want coffee, we can chat even more. Biggest risk you've ever taken? Actually, I am a business owner. Really? I don't want to be on camera, man. We interview people in the street and we post a video. The biggest risk I ever took was opening a business. Restaurant business. Capital intensive thing to start. So how did you get the capital necessary to open? Me and my brother borrowed the money. You borrowed all it. All the money we had. And how much did you take out as a loan? Thirty grand. Did you open a second restaurant? Uh, yes. Wow. How many restaurants do you own total? Two. What revenue will they bring in this year total? Not sure yet. COVID, it's tough, you know. Yeah. How did you adjust to COVID? You know, COVID. Well, I adjusted. You adjusted. Uh, my longevity kept me in business. It forced restaurant owners to pivot. So what was your pivot that kept you alive? I had good staff. I had good advice. So how did you become profitable as fast as possible? Because that's the hardest part. It's, it's you know, uh, the restaurant business, you know, they say, you know, you've got two years, you're, you're good. I really didn't start to see it till about three years. How many hours a week were you working in the uh, restaurant? 70. And 14, 16 hour days back to back. How did you find the people that you could trust because to um, get out of the restaurant you get lucky i take care of them they take care of me i don't want to train someone every three months you know what i'm saying no i want, yeah. I want them for years i've had people with me for over 20 years wow that's no. is there a third one coming no way why no i want to streamline now yeah. can you increase the profit though can you increase the bottom line uh, i could so what's one way you could double your bottom line in a year i could renovate my upstairs and make a banquet room there it is do it okay. have a good night all right guys Renovate the upstairs, make a banquet room. See, that's that's a key thing, because not always do you need to scale and get bigger. You just gotta find a way to increase the bottom line. And this guy just provided the perfect example. Just renovate. <laughs>